Hollywood's narcissism seemingly knows no bounds, and it doesn't look like it's about to let up anytime soon. We'll talk about it more in just a second here. So this article is from September 18th, 2023 on Bounding into Comics, and the title is Percy Jackson writer Rick Riordan or Riordan, yeah, Riordan, or Riordan, Rick R., claims race-replacing characters in Disney Plus series was so, quote, that everybody could look at this series and see themselves. Now, in the original take I did, I ended up reading this article, but it's a pretty lengthy one, so I don't want to go over it again. But the basic summary is, his justification for why they race-swapped some of the Percy Jackson characters, and full disclosure, I'm not entirely familiar with Percy Jackson. I didn't read it. I just remember the one movie that came out way back in the day, and there was a big thing about it. But basically, his defense was the typical we need our kids to see themselves exactly how they are in these characters, blah, blah, blah. I need to see myself in these characters, blah, blah, blah. And he talks about how he made Percy Jackson because his son had ADHD and a couple of other difficulties, and he wanted his son to feel super empowered and like he could do anything. And really, there's nothing wrong with trying to encourage your son, but he goes above and beyond and makes it makes a character that is like his son, but he realizes that his difference could make him into a, quote, demigod and... You know, I've got an issue with that even. I feel like that's just going a little overboard. You don't you don't lie to your kids like that and tell them they could be literal gods. That's just messed up. I don't I don't much care for it. Uh but he just you know, he started out with Greek heroes and reading Greek mythology to his son cuz he liked it and then when he ran out, he came up with his own. And then it goes into just different examples of how people are trying to use this as, you know, as a defense for messing with their own lore. If you're going to make characters black, make them black to begin with. Don't race swap them for the sake of patting people like me on the back because that doesn't work. It doesn't do anything. I guarantee you most black people I know don't care. If they know a character's white, they're insulted by the fact that you, you're you basically telling them they cannot enjoy that character for who they were. They have to look like you. They have to sound like you. Or they have to look at... They have to basically be an approximation of what Hollywood thinks of you, which is all this is. All of this race swapping is basically them guessing what you, what you are, who you are, what you look like, what you sound like. There's no concept of individuality in Hollywood. It's all collectivism. Mm -hmm and narcissism and these people have a savior complex when it comes to minorities when it comes to disenfranchised groups they feel like by doing all of this that they can honestly make people feel better about themselves and that they can make people better that's not how it works and people are going to better their lives it's based on their actions it's based on their character it's based on who they are not based on their arbitrary traits like their skin color or what's between their legs or their own personal beliefs I mean, it's just, it's idiocy. That's really all it is. It's narcissism, it's idiocy. And yet, when people push against this or point out that this is absurd, they often will get people pushing back saying, why do you care? It's all fiction anyway. Believe it or not, there was a time that fiction mattered. And that fiction was compelling. It was good escapism. I made an entire vi video talking about the importance of escapism and why escapism needs to go back to being what it once was, which was naturally just diverse and and good storytelling, and compelling storytelling, and good quality. We've lost quality because the focus has gone away from quality and more towards representation. Representation does not matter in the grand scheme of things. It never really has. If you've got a show with an all-black family, that's great. That was Family Matters. But yet nobody talks about Family Matters other than, remember how funny Urkel was? You know, it was a great show, and it was a great show because... It was all in the title, Family Matters. It had family values, despite the fact that they were black. Everybody could relate to their family values. And they only ever did a handful of episodes dealing with the issue of them being black. They didn't make it a central core focus of the show. The central core focus was who they were as individual family members and people and how they dealt with problems, which was very realistic. It was very realistic. In some ways, it wasn't. It got a little hokey, and they did some things for the sake of humor. But there were a lot of people who walked away certain episodes feeling good, feeling better about their family, their friends, so on and so forth. 
And that's what you want, but Hollywood doesn't do this anymore because Hollywood says, let's take a character that was once white, make them black, or make them gay, or make them whatever. That, that'll change the world. That'll make the world a better place. No, it freaking won't. No, it won't. At the end of the day, you're just making people mad who know better. You're insulting people's intelligence, regardless of if they're black, white, Hispanic, straight, gay, whatever. Doesn't matter what you are. If people enjoy an established franchise and you change it to try to pander, which is all this is, this is pandering, this is savior complex, then most people see right through it and they walk in the other direction. What happened to this thing that I love? What? Why isn't it about the very subject matter that drew me to it in the first place? Why is it suddenly about people's identity? That doesn't make any sense. That's what they've done with Star Wars. That's what they've done with Star Trek. That's what they've done with Lord of the Rings. That's what they've done with Percy Jackson. It's what they've done with DC and Marvel Comics. That's what they have done all across the board. It's what they've done in several ways with Barbie. And Barbie's the rare exception of it being a success due to just the sheer strength of the brand. Now you've got people going back and forth about that. Huh, get woke, go broke doesn't actually, doesn't actually mean anything. So you've got one exception... And you're trying to make that into the rule. It's not going to work. Not every brand is as strong as Barbie. But I mean, this is all just... This is all just pandering. And you can tell Disney's the laziest with it. They take as many, quote-unquote, diverse people as they can find. And they just shove them in there. Instead of creating whole new stories with these diverse people from the ground up so that they can have their own new established fan bases, they take stuff that exists and they say, we want to make this for everybody. And what's insulting about that, what's really insulting about that ideology is they're saying that people of color and minorities and anybody else can't enjoy something unless it's specifically like them. So all of my life as a black man, I could never enjoy anything that was predominantly white. Or as a Christian, I couldn't enjoy anything that, you know, wasn't Christian or that wasn't overtly preaching the gospel. It's just insulting. It's insulting because it denies reality at every possible turn. You know, this man means well with having written a character for his son to be inspired by, but there's a bit of narcissism behind it, and there's also a lot of virtue signaling taking place. This was an interview he did with Entertainment Weekly talking about all this, and he was basically just trying to glorify his own efforts to, you know, race and gender swap and whatever he did with this current Disney Plus series. But the article also points out that Disney Plus now has quotas since Reimagine Tomorrow of how many people of color and minority groups and disenfranchised groups there can be in a series. That's their business model now. So he's not even being completely honest. And his wife pointed out in 2002 that the reason this character was white was because that was the standard that was expected. So they're retroactively changing it now that it's more... That standard has sort of lifted. I don't know if that standard was legitimate or not, but regardless, that's the explanation that she gave. It's just so arrogant and frustrating because these are the people who are supposed to be in charge of creating stories that are supposed to inspire people through escapism. Inspire people to create and enjoy good stories. It's not supposed to necessarily change the world, change the geopolitical landscape. But they're using this stuff as propaganda. As opposed to just having something that everybody can enjoy. Not everybody can enjoy this because they're being preached to about a very specific set of values. Usually that, you know, minorities are some of the best people in the world. Well, that's not entirely true. It's not, people aren't good because of their skin color or ethnicity. They're good because they choose to be good, because they have a set of moral values that they choose to live and abide by. You don't just say, black, therefore good. I don't want people to look at me, look at my skin tone, and go, he's a good person. I want people to know that if there's any good in me, it's because of who I am in Christ as a Christian, not because of my skin color. That's just absurd. Nobody should, nobody should be deriving value judgments based on skin color. That's how you get racism and racial supremacy. Don't ever think that racial supremacy can't happen amongst minority or disenfranchised groups. It absolutely can. And they can become protected classes as a result. If we don't get away from this racial identitarianism, this gender identitarianism, this sexuality identitarianism, it's going to end in a horrible trash fire of people just despising each other. Because you're reducing people down to arbitrary traits and lifestyles. 
You're not actually looking at individual people. You're just looking at the fact that historically some people have been disenfranchised. Now you need to make them the superior group. It's not about making them equal. They will say, we're about equality. We're about inclusion. No, it's not. It's about supremacy. It's about elevating people and getting praise from people for doing so. Because it's often white people who are trying to elevate everybody else who isn't white because they feel guilty because they read a history book that says that white people traditionally oppress people of color. Even though people of color often oppress other people of color and have throughout history. It's not just a one-way street. People who believe that are being lied to. Oppression is a human condition. We are sinful, fallen human beings, and that's what happens. Even if you don't believe in the concept of original sin, that's just human nature. That's what people do. It's not right, but the best way to deal with it is not to single out groups of people and elevate them above others. It's to treat everybody as equals, which is a lot easier to do than whatever the heck Hollywood is doing right now. They're not treating people as equals right now. They're elevating certain groups of people above others and telling them they deserve to be in the spotlight more than anybody else. Because white people and straight people and Christian people and conservative people, they've had it too good for too long and they've, they've shut the door on everybody else, even though they haven't. It's just lies on top of lies. And manipulation on top of manipulation. They've got a savior complex. They think they can save every minority and disenfranchised group. And they can't. But that's how they think and that's how they feel. Because they live in these, these bubble urban centers and they don't go outside of them. They don't realize there's a world greater than that. Where there's plenty of people of diverse origin that come together and do wonderful things together naturally. And there's no attention brought to their various states of identity. They don't realize any of this because they are trapped in these urban centers, and these urban centers are filled with all of this liberal nonsense. That's how these people operate. And it's embarrassing, frankly. People say, well, are you triggered by... No, I'm not triggered by any of this. I'm just pointing out the absurdities. That's the only reason I make these videos. is because these, this method of thinking is absurd, and it's ruining the entertainment industry. There are people within or outside the entertainment industry as well as within, who don't prescribe to any of this. But if you're in the entertainment industry, you don't get to make stuff if you don't have this ideology. That's why so many people are piling on board. Not everybody who engages in this authentically believes it. In fact, I would say a good majority probably don't. There's a good chance that Rick R. here, Rick Riordan, is full of crap and that he's just lying to further his own aims, to further his own career. It's very possible. It's more possible than not, in fact. Because this is how you get ahead. You don't have to sincerely believe any of this. And that's the most insulting thing. But yet they will push it onto you who probably don't believe it. Obviously, there are, unfortunately are people who do believe this. And I don't know what to say to those people other than good luck when it all comes crashing down. But it's absurdity on top of absurdity. And it's not ending anytime soon. This is a part of the ongoing culture war that just keeps going and going. As long as these people are in charge of entertainment, it's going to get worse and worse and more and more people are walking away. There's a reason they're giving Disney Plus away for $1.99 because it's filled with shows like this that people don't want to watch. People are being insulted at every possible turn. They're being told what their value set should be. They're being preached to when they didn't actually ask to go to a sermon. Somebody willingly goes to a church or to a gr religious group, that's their choice. But they're inserting this, this, frankly, religious ideology into entertainment. The people who are making it are doing it. Because people are saying, well, who's they? You guys act like there's some grand conspiracy. The people who make this stuff, they're coming out, they're talking about it, they're engaging with it. There's no grand conspiracy. We're just pointing out the absurdity of what it is that they're saying and attempting to do. Entertainment used to be enjoyed by all groups of people. People weren't looking at Percy Jackson and complaining there weren't enough black people because it was good the way that it was, and there was no barrier of entry. By lack of black people did not mean that black people were in immediately excluded from enjoying that. That's not how that works, but that's how they're talking, and that's how they perceive things. They feel guilty about not applying modern standards to things that they made in the past that are still enjoyed today, so they retroactively have to fix what they did in the past, and it's really absurd. It's completely absurd. I'm tired of it, frankly, but I'll never get tired of pointing out the absurdities with it, because I just point at it, laugh, and shake my head, and just say, hey, listen, there's plenty of people who aren't doing this outside of Hollywood. Go give them your support.
You know, go support independent projects of people who have stated they're tired of this stupid modern standard. Hollywood needs to collapse, the entire Hollywood system. That's the only thing I agree with some of the people on strike right now, which is the system needs to collapse because it perpetuates this. It's filled with people who perpetuate this. Those people need to... They, they need to stop latching onto these legacy franchises and create their own things and let it stand on its own merit, as opposed to trying to infiltrate everything that people like that are neutral, like Star Wars and Marvel and DC and Lord of the Rings and Percy Jackson and Indiana Jones and Barbie and soon-to-be Hot Wheels, unfortunately, and everything under the sun. They need to leave the popular franchises that aren't about uh, identity politics and uh, woke ideology alone. And just make their own stuff that's based on that from the very beginning. But they have to use what you and I like that has nothing to do with that. And you don't have a right to complain if they do. You get pushback from these people saying, you don't have a right to. You'll be gaslit. Oh, it's not a big deal. Oh, you're just a big baby. I've heard it all. I've heard it all. And I've seen other people who are much better than me at this with YouTube get complaints. It's absolutely ridiculous. The reason people point this out is because, again, it never used to be like this. It is being artificially forced on everybody. And you either agree with it or you don't. They say, well, if you don't agree, walk away. And then when you walk away and it underperforms, they go, oh, it's a bunch of bigots and sexists and homophobes and blah, blah, blah. So there's no winning with these people. These people are cultists that have taken over entertainment. And I will be glad when they're gone because they can't sustain this they can't sustain this economically. It is not economically feasible to keep making things like this. Eventually, the goodwill that they rely on of the brand, like Percy Jackson or Star Wars, eventually that runs out and people aren't getting things of as, as of significant quality. They don't get it anymore. They start getting things that are just crap, and then eventually they walk away because nothing of quality is being given to them. They always sacrifice quality for the sake of the message. They haven't learned how to make something of quality. But they're devoted to the message. It, it is an absolute ideological cult. I'm frankly tired of it, and I know it's not going away. But like many others, I'm going to keep pointing it out whenever it gets the most absurd to me. I'm not going to make every video be about this. But I am going to point out examples that I think are worth talking about, and this is definitely one of them. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Super Koopa TV. Remember, Hollywood doesn't respect you. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. God bless. Have a good one. Peace.